September of 2012, we left our home port of Seattle on a trip around the world in our Nordhaven 52 Dorona. Hello, this is James and Jennifer Hamilton aboard Nordhaven 52 Dorona at the Isle of Gia in Scotland. Today we're going to do a scheduled oil change on our Northern Lights generator. That's right. This is an M843 NW3.3. It's a 12 kilowatt Northern Lights generator, three cylinder engine. It's the same engine as our wing engine from, from a design perspective and a manufacturer perspective. The only difference being the generator is a three cylinder while well the wing is a four cylinder. This will be the 29th time I've changed the oil. That's um, a lot. <laughs> it is. And so um, we ought to be getting reasonably good at it um, by now and should be able to move along relatively quickly. So let's head down. Okay. One of the things we need to remember to do is before heading down to, the, to, to work on the generator or do anything on the mechanical systems, we need to shut off the auto start system. This is the system that starts the generator when the batteries get to a low state of charge. Um, so the reason, the reason that blue light's there is to indicate that it's, it's armed right now, it's, it's ready to go. You'll see a blue light in the engine room, further warning as well. All right, here we are in the engine room of Dorona. On my left is the is the 12 kilowatt generator that we'll be working on today. First thing I'd like to point out is this is these two engines. This is the emergency wing engine that also runs hydraulics and the generator uh, engine. These are both identical, both supplied by Northern Lights in Seattle. And the, the beauty of, of having these both identical is they share all the parts. The only difference is this is a four cylinder, this is a three cylinder, but they share water pump, alternator, starter, fuel filters, oil filters, you name it. So it's nice from a spares perspective to have them overlapping. Now, before we start, the first thing I have to check is I'll look up here at these warning lights. And what these warning lights mean, the blue one is auto start, which means it's not on, which means that the generator is safe to be worked on. And there's a warning light on, and the only reason that's on is that whenever auto starts not on, it means our batteries are not protected, we have an orange warning light when that's going on. So we, we know that's the right state. That's what we want to see. And I see you've got a label on the generator too that says to, to remind you to disable auto start before servicing. Yeah, it's important. The last thing you want to do is to have this, this start up while, while you're servicing it. This is the sound attenuation shield coming off. The first thing we'll do when we look down here is a couple things jump out right away. First, because it's relatively clean, you can see if there's any problems at all. And the first thing you'll notice right away is there's a white powdery substance down there. And that's just started. If you look carefully at the coolant pump above it, you'll see that the, the uh, ceramic um, seal is just starting to fail on that pump. And it's a good time to change it. In fact, it'll probably be interesting to, 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 uh, to change it by video, but, or in a video. But when I'm looking at that, it says it's going to fail in the near, near future. I tend to treat water pumps as disposable items where I run them till they die. We've got good backup on here. If this generator fails to start, or if, if anything goes wrong, it just gets shut down by the automation system. And so I don't worry too much about that. I'll change it either when we're ready to change, when we're ready to change it, or if it starts to leak more seriously. In the meantime, um, I just know that it's coming. We have plenty of spares on, on board, so that's not a problem. So that's, a, that's something that we can see from this is coming up. It's not a problem today. Well, it's, it's probably a little bit of a problem today, but um, I, it's, it's definitely an issue coming up that we need to service. Second thing we'll notice is if you come around here, look at the cover, you'll see there's a thin, thin film of oil. There's no leaking oil, but a thin film of oil on there. This just started to show up about a month ago, and there's a little tiny bit of oil here as well. And what that is, is it's very faint misting of oil. That says that the rear main oil seal is just starting to leak a little bit. 
That's absolutely not an issue. That'll be probably a year or more before I have to service it. And it'll be difficult because it requires splitting off the, the generator section of the engine, backing that away, and replacing the, the, the rear main oil seal when it's split in half. So that's a big job. I'm not looking forward to it. No. <laughs> And, in, and right now, it's, I mean, a tiny misting like that's not a problem. When it starts to leak a more noticeable amount, it'll probably require a little bit of attention. For sure, that water pump will need attention um, earlier. Is this a typical number of hours or age for the rear main oil seal to go, or...? Um, not really. I've seen them, I've seen them fail immediately, and I've seen them fail um, at very high hours. It really comes down to, um, was it installed properly is, of course, an important, important first item. Uh, second one is the heat. Um, if they've run in a very hot environment, as many of these um, enclosures, enclosed systems tend to run kind of hot, if, if that's happened, it'll fail quite early. Um, if, it's, if it's getting good airflow and, and it's not, and it's not over temperature, I would expect it to go, I would expect it to go up upwards of 10,000 hours. I mean, that's, and then this one actually still might go 10,000 hours in that it's not really serious enough problem to deal with it yet. And remind me how many hours we've got on, on this. This is 6,700 you know, okay. on it right now. And so arguably maybe a little early on that showing a bit of misting, but not much of a problem. The water pump is more of a problem. When I see how much is leaking there, it, it, not leaking, but pardon me, is there's no leaks yet, but there's a little bit of debris from that ceramic filter. It tells me it is getting close to needing to be changed. And one more question, you mentioned um, heat. What do, you, what do you consider high heat for this generator that would cause damage to the seals and things? Yes, it's a little bit debatable. Um, experts don't like the enclosure temperature over 130 Fahrenheit. So inside the enclosure, not over 130. I've never measured ours, so you know it, it, it. The thing that so I don't know exactly what it is. The thing that you look for is to make sure that none of the um, none of the sound dampening material is twisted away from from the generator and is plugging up airflow, especially at the back or, or in here where the air flows in or the air flows out. Making sure all those passages are clear is absolutely vital. Ours are. So it really comes down to, this is the way it was designed. The engine room is, um, is well ventilated, so that's, that's well designed. So it really comes down to, um, it's a wear item. You expect it to last upwards of 10,000 hours. I like to put this over here just to get it out of the way. Okay. I'm getting a bunch of rags. Um, I like to wear gloves when I change the oils because they, they can be dirty. And what are those rags you've got, those red ones? Those are just shop rags. And you just reuse those? Sorry? You just reuse them? Yeah, what happens is we've got a few hundred of them um, bought 10 years ago. They just We just clean them and, and uh, recycle them as we go. These were purchased on Amazon quite inexpensively. All right, we've kind of surveyed the situation. We know the engine's in good shape. We know we've got a little bit of work coming up in the cooling pump. The only thing missing for completing this job quickly is we need to get the new oil filter. Um, this is the oil filter right there. The problem with this design, at least the reason I don't like it, is it runs oil down the side of the engine. So I like to have a new one available so I can switch them relatively quickly and minimize the amount of mess that I make. So let's go get the oil filter. Okay. So we keep a lot of parts around the boat and the oil filters for the engines are underneath the bed. So we'll get this mattress and the base up. We've got a lot of parts underneath here. Um, the oil filters are right in this bag. Don't say that's the only one left. That's impossible. No, no, that's the only one left. I have a whole bunch more um, in a harder to get at storage. So I'll, I'll put, put a few in here. They're easy to get. So this is the only one in the easy to get place. Then I've got some work myself to do in the future to get more out. So um, so we got our, our last one from the easy spot. And uh, then we'll, that's all you need is this and a couple garbage bags, I guess. Is all yeah, you need. I'll get the garbage bags and I'll meet you down below. Okay. All right. First thing I'm going to get this stuff out of the way because that's where I'm going to put the oil. I like to wear gloves just because old engine oil tends to be black and, and grimier than I like.
This is where the oil is stored on Dorona. I usually just flip this over to here. This is, this is the cover that holds the oil in place when we're at sea. You need it well secured. Here's a brand new Shell Remula R4L. Very good, high quality oil. So this is what we'll be filling. How much oil do you have back there? There is um, 20 gallons back there and so there's enough. Usually the way it plays out is it'll do two generator oil changes and three main engine oil changes and it means that much oil can last upwards of a year. What we do is we cycle through one empty container, there's five containers in total, one's empty, we pump the used oil into here, pump the new oil from there, and just slowly work our way through all the containers. Works so, out really well. So you end up going from all full of new oil to all full of used oil. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then how do you get rid of the oil? Um, in, in most marinas, or a high percentage of the marinas, have, have recycling depots. And so just whenever we're near a marina or at a marina, we'll ask if they do. Because we can store oil for a very long time, we can go upwards of a year this way, we always find something um, along the way. Uh, not always. In Amsterdam, we had a little bit of trouble where we actually had to pay 100 liters, uh, sorry, 100 euros to dispose of the oil. But that's the first time in 10 years. Usually it's just simply recycled, not, not a problem at all. Now, you'd at one point, we'd considered having um, a built-in storage container for oil, for both used and new oil. And are you glad we did or glad we didn't? Or I mean, sort of glad we didn't? It's funny, you know, it, it seems like a better setup to have permanent storage for oil. But using these containers means I pump from one into an, and then pump the old oil into one, the new oil pumped into the engine. It just cycles between it. You carry it on in the containers and you carry it back off in the containers. It's actually better. If you have a built-in oil tank, you need to bring containers into the boat. You need to pour the oil, pump the oil into the storage area. You need to pump the used oil into a different storage area. You need to pump the used oil out of the storage area into the containers and then cart it off again. And so there's just a lot more steps with built-in oil tanks, even though it at a distance it seems like a better idea so we're almost ready to start pumping the oil all right this is this is the reverso oil change pump and if you look along the bottom you see it, it could pump out the main transmission the wing engine the main engine the generator or the wing transmission today we'll be doing the generator so that's on this hose is 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 the pump out hose and so we'll put it into here and that's the used oil bin yep and i keep a cap on there just so it doesn't run any residue of the used oil out of there now we we open the valve on the engine to open up the sump to the oil change systems the reason why this valve is kept closed is in the event that the oil chain system fails or something goes wrong, you wouldn't want it to pump out the contents of the generator while it's running. So now it's open. Now this one's open. We select drain. I like to open up this to the crank case. You can hear the suction. Helps it pump out more quickly. And then we'll give it a few minutes just to, to pump down. You can hear the pumps under load, which says it's still it's still moving oil. And how much oil does this uh, generator hold? Uh, I think it's written on here, 5.5 liters. And you can hear it's now starting to, to recycle. Not recycle, but it's pumping air out of the sump. So it's basically done. I let it run like this for a little bit just to get the last remain remnants of the oil. In addition, um, one of the tricks that I like to do to minimize the amount of oil that runs down the, the runs down the engine, I like to leave the pump on when I'm taking when I'm taking off the, the filter. And so what I'm doing is I put this, I put the cap back on now, closing off the sump. And now what I'm going to do is open up, open up the, the filter, and and try to minimize the try to minimize the amount of oil that runs down the side. 
Ah, so I still need an oil diaper or two. I'll pull these out. Now what I'm going to do is undo the oil filter, which is fairly tight, but by hand, but still adjustable by hand or removable by hand. And as I start to re relieve the pressure on that, I'm going to let the oil pump suck some um, suck air through the top of the filter. And what I'm trying to do is to minimize the amount of oil that's in the filter to make this less and less of a messy task. You can see there's a little bit of oil spilling. There's just nothing you can do about that with this design. At that point, the oil filter's back on there. I'm gonna remove this cap to allow the remnants of the oil to pump out. You can hear the suction. So why would there be still more oil to come out after you've taken the filter off? Well, there's it collects in the sump and the only reason I'm leaving that pump on for as long as I have is I like to get as much as I possibly can out of there. So I'm just cleaning up what's there a little bit more. Do you worry about the pump running dry or anything? Is that not a concern for it? Over long periods of time it, it is a concern but but um, that takes a long time. So no it's it's perfectly happy doing that and that's the way I always do it. What I'm really looking for is, is to make it as le the least mess as possible. You can see that that was, was relatively light. That wasn't too bad, yeah. No, it wasn't. And how does the old oil look? Can you tell from the filter or is it not the right time to look? Uh, you can look at it. It's, it looks like 250 engine, uh, 250 hour engine oil. Uh, you're right, you can also see it in the filter itself. It's, it's black. Yeah. Not, not completely black. I mean, it's kind of a, it's, it's kind of a, a grayish black. But you know, it's it's definitely you know 250, I think six hours on it right now, so it's time for a change. One thing that we do that's a little bit unusual is many people recommend against this, so it's a judgment call on, on how you want to do it. Um, we choose to pump oil back into the engine, which means the hoses that that that, that still have residue dirty oil in them are going right back into that engine. Most people would choose to pour it in through here. The reason I don't do that is, quite honestly, two, two reasons. One's expediency. It's just it just takes longer to pour it through here. It's a very slow, uh, it's a very slow mechanism, uh, fill mechanism, it, and it's super easy to spill it there because it overflows. And the second reason is, the the entire engine is full of used oil. The the difference of the amount that I push back with um, with pumping the new oil through there is really quite small. And so I just don't worry about it. That's my personal take on it. A lot of people prefer not to do that, and it's certainly no harm not to do it either. So what are you up to now? I'm moving the new oil into place, moving the old oil away. This oil, this oil container has never been opened before, so I have to open it first. And that's the oil we got while we were in Amsterdam? Yes. And how hard have you found it to get oil as we've traveled the world? Super easy. Every, almost every, um, almost every country, every city in the world has diesel engines somewhere, if not cars, then generators and other things. And so we found it super easy um, to, to get engine oil. Can't always get the exact quality or brand that I want, but you can always get oil that is um, within the manufacturer specifications. Um, I tend to buy a little bit above the manufacturer specifi specifications, but that's not always possible in all parts of the world. Some parts just you know, don't don't have that available easily. What kind of oil do you like to have? Why is it, what's the difference between what's recommended and what you like to use? I like the European um, specifications, so I use I use the European specifications. Um, the, the U.S. the U.S. one is is um, very similar. If you look on the side here. 
you'll see all the way down there a whole bunch of different specifications and so um, CJ um, CJ4 is, is, a, is a common US specification um, I tend to use what um, the European specification when I look for it and so um, a great oil is uh, is an ACEA um, E9 that's what this is and a acceptable oil and actually very good is is an E7 so that's just what I look for um, I like Delo 400 and I like the Shell Rumula, but other oils work just you know fine too, not a problem. Okay, so what I've done is I moved the hose over to here. I'm now going to take a funnel, drop it down in the used oil, pick up the filter, and there's a tiny amount of oil that will just be running down on there. And so I'll get rid of that, um, pour off the oil out of that that filter and get it ready to go. Now it's time to put the oil in. Instead of drain, I'm going to select fill this time. And you can hear it's, it's picking up and now starting to pump. And how do you know when to stop? Yeah, that's a really tough one. Because I'm doing, because I'm doing it this way, um, it's easy to get too much oil in the engine, so I got to be a little careful on that one. So what I'm going to do is clear the dips, clean the dipstick, and check it out. And you can see it's not on there yet. Oops. See, it's not on the dipstick yet. That gurgling sound is the oil running into the engine? Yes, well, that's air actually. What happens is I lift it, I lift it above the oil level just to stop it from flowing in. Ah. There you see it stopped again. So it's right at the oil line right now. Can you show me again? I couldn't quite see where the yeah, oil sure. point, point out the oil line. That's the little hole right there is full. And so this is, is, is just barely above that. Okay. Which is good because the oil filter is empty. We're going to have to fill the oil filter. Put the cap back on. Last ch check on on the um, on the filter being good and tight. At this point, at this point, it's ready to go. And what's that? You're pushing. What's that? Panel? This is a generator controller. It's called a WaveNet, made by Northern Lights. And it's it's what drives auto start, but it's also responsible for for um, reporting. Okay, so what we saw there is I just started it and what I'm looking for, it shows oil pressure on the gauge. What I'm looking for is very fast rise to full oil pressure, did that. So um, that's good news. Bad news is it was slow to start. We've noticed recently that when, when the fuel level in the tank is low is my, is my supposition, it takes a few cranks to start. I don't really have a full theory on what's going on there, but I suspect it's, it's fuel draining back um, to the tank from the lines when the oil when the fuel level is a little bit lower But I've got more work to do to figure out what that is and so it's a concern You do not want to hear an, en uh, an engine in good condition turn uh, a couple cranks like that before it starts it, sh it should start up instantly so that is a concern and it wasn't like that uh, a few months ago So it's it's something that does need attention and, and I'm going to look at it and That's the fuel level in the supply tank not our main tanks, right? Correct. Yes, correct. How's the oil level look? It'll be slightly lower than it was before. You see, it's just barely below the full line. Yeah, yeah. So that's went to the filter. That's the little bit that went into the to the filter. I might put just a tiny that a tiny amount amount more in there, but it will be a very small amount.
that's it for that one last check it's just barely below full which is fine and we're good so that's basically a done job I'm gonna start it up I always run it for a couple minutes just to check for leaks there never are any um, then I'll put the cover back on and uh, turn the auto start system on and we'll be ready to go great that's it all right this job is done but of course no, no jobs done until it's until everything's put back away um, what I usually do on these is I like to clean things up whenever I'm in an area partly because the reason why we can see that little bit of a of seal problem on the, on the uh, on, on the raw water pump is because we it's kept clean and so you you can see the residue down below it That'll give you a fair feel for if it's getting a lot worse as well, quickly. Yeah, something like that really shouldn't... Um, it, it, I've, you shouldn't really see any bits of, 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 of uh, water uh, residue underneath uh, of, underneath a pump like that. And so it kind of, it says that pump really needs to be changed in, in, the, in the near future. Um, it won't be a catastrophic failure. It'll just start leaking water, is, is my supposition. What I'm doing right now is just cleaning the, the, the oil filter and since I got a couple fingerprints on it, it's like things nice and clean. Pretty much ready to go there. So what I do is I cap off this oil pump just in the off chance that some residue comes out the out of the bottom of it just to keep things clean and that just tucks away down there yeah that's just where it stores Oh, here comes Spitfire to do an inspection, make sure oh, the job was done well. There's Spitfire. <laughs> oh, nope, nope. <laughs> um, did you see where I put, yeah, pass me that oil container, the old box. There you go. I like to put an oil um, rag on there, an oil diaper on there, and stick the filter back into the old box. Just to make sure that no residue runs anywhere. Then what we'll do is we'll drop it into a bag. I'll bag up this and, and any and anything else that we that we use as part of the job. And eventually, when I'm done, I'll double bag it just to be on the safe side. So this is the this is what's left of the clean oil. Let's take a look into the oil area before you. Okay. So we've got. Looks like we got. Is this a full one in front right here? Yeah, there's a three to four. So uh, these three are full. Yeah, these are these are 20 liters each. So each one of those is full, and then the one I'm lifting in now is is half full. Okay. And so um, e each time we do the oil change in the main, it'll do an entire one of these. Okay. And each time we do an oil change in the in the wing or the or the gen, it'll use a little bit less than half of one of these. That's a fair bit. That's what I'd expect. Yeah, they, they use they use a fair amount of oil. But um, more um, oil is goodness. And what's in the very back there behind these oil? You see a blue bin. There's more oil or more something. There is. There is um, there's a container of hydraulic oil for the hydraulic system and a container of automatic transmission oil. And here is Spitfire. As you guessed, he might show up. Yeah, got to take a look. Make sure the job was done well. Hey, Spit. Yeah, he looks like he's going to... It's getting suspicious. We love holding things in with trailer straps and it's it's convenient and very secure. And so even if the boat is leaned over really, really heavily, this is absolutely not going to be a problem. And this used one is just a little bit less than half full. And 
and the way I keep it in there, it's wedged with the other containers, and I like to keep the, the opening right near us. So if there's any waste oil that needs to be gotten rid of, I just pour it in there, and I'm done with it. This, we only used, we only used one oil diaper, so I'm just putting this back with the remainder of them. We only used one rag, so these are all going back. There's your other garbage bag. You want that too? I do. I don't get that. Spitfire's keeping a close eye on me. I can see him up there on the engine. Okay, so that is now done. I'm just cleaning off. It's hard to believe I get fingerprints on things when, the, when they're hardly touched anything, but still did. Okay, so that's, that's ready to go and will last us another 250 hours. And the only thing remaining to do is to turn auto start back on and then um, mark off in the maintenance checklist that this job's done. And what's the maintenance checklist? Is that how, that's how you remember to do all the jobs? Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of a cool piece of software that sends mail every morning of any jobs that are needing to be done today or coming up in the near future. And so um, whenever I've got time, I just work through, work through the list. When I'm done, check it off and then this job won't be mentioned again for 250 hours. Well, that sounds great. Yep. You can read more about our trip around the world at mvderona.com, including an interactive map showing our track with a live update of our current location.